everybody, it is I, the Great Clement, and now, ladies and gentlemen, we're tackling a Nintendo Wii title that actually got a huge amount of support, a huge amount of acclaim. It's actually one of the best titles for the system. And it's a Sonic game! <laughs> Welcome to Sonic Colors. Sega! <laughs> oh man, this game is pretty fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. So, this is for the Nintendo Wii, uh, this is also for the Nintendo DS, and I will be showing off both versions of this game, uh, so you'll be seeing some DS footage as the playthrough goes along. But uh, I remember this one was kind of a surprise hit for a lot of Sonic fans. Certainly, when I saw the first few teasers of Sonic Colors, it was about Sonic running around with some colorful aliens, it was gonna be a Wii title. I kind of expected a sort of average to good game. I did not expect it to be the mega hit, the mega sensation that everyone friggin' loves that it actually became. I mean, this was a huge surprise hit. And what this game basically does is, it takes all the good parts we liked about Sonic Unleashed and strips out all the bad stuff we didn't like. No metal hunting, no werehog, no ridiculously over-the-top 20-minute long levels that are bullshit to go through. Instead, they have refined the daytime Sonic stages, and that's all you're playing! You know, there's no Big the Cat fishing, there's no Sonic with a sword, there's no, uh, oh, now you have to play as Silver the Hedgehog, or the werehog, or any of that stuff. As you can see, this is the game for the whole entire game. You're Sonic, you're running, you're collecting rings, you're hitting checkpoints, you're homing attacking on the balloons here, woo! And it's very much like Daytime Sonic. Uh, you have a boost mechanic, although it operates a little bit differently in Sonic Colors. See, in Unleashed, whenever you picked up rings, it just filled up your boost meter. It would just... and you would constantly be running into rings throughout all of Sonic Unleashed. So, like, you could literally go through an entire stage of the daytime levels just boosting the whole way through. Like, it was a huge emphasis on speed, and the players who knew what they were doing could S-rank everything and keep clipping at a crazy rate, and it would be, like, over the top and crazy, you know? Uh, but with Sonic Colors, you only really get boost when you run into certain aliens or if you destroy certain badniks on the field. Like, some badniks will actually have those aliens inside them, and when you homing attack them, you'll get that alien and get the boost energy. So you don't have unlimited boost like you did in Unleashed. You can't just boost the entire stage. Uh, but I don't really mind that too much. I mean, I do think the Unleashed levels are a little bit more thrilling, uh, but that's not to say these levels are bad at all. That's not to say that these levels are slow-paced or that they're, like, kind of clunky or anything. No, I think they're just fine as they are, too. It, some people may appreciate the fact that you're actually earning your speed and choosing when to go faster and when to, to actually accelerate and make that giant boom that when you know that propels you forward and lets you barrel through enemies and stuff. And uh, boom! One minute, forty seconds in, we have cleared the first act. And you'll notice we actually destroyed a container that was holding a whole bunch of uh, alien creatures. 
Sort of like the roboticizers from the old Genesis games, where there was like a whole bunch of flickies and pigs and penguins and stuff in the containers, you know? Except now we're freeing aliens, and that kind of feels a lot more similar to what I knew about Sonic when I was a kid, you know? You got Big Bad Dr. Eggman taking these animals from their habitat, putting them into robots to power his nefarious schemes and his, in his bid for global domination, and we have to go save those creatures. We have to go save everybody and stop Dr. Eggman. There's no mythical god monster, there's no perfect dark Gaia, there's no uh, chaos, there's no Iblis, you know? It's just Eggman doing Eggman shit, and we gotta stop him because he's hurting a whole bunch of animals, you know? And again, this is the gameplay! <laughs> no Werehog, no metal collecting. You do not need to collect a certain amount of metals in order to progress to the next level. You can just play from level 1 to the final boss, just from playing the levels. You don't need red rings, you don't need S ranks, you don't need anything. You just move and boost and homing attack and it's all fantastic. Uh, this game has a whole bunch of different control schemes. I'm going to be using the GameCube controller because I just, I really hate motion controls. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've tried playing this game with a Wiimote nunchuck system and I find using like the laser wisps, the, the laser wisp and stuff, kind of annoying with that. So I just stick with the GameCube controller, although, you know. You can play with a classic controller, GameCube controller, Wiimote, and, uh, Wiimote and Nunchuck, I believe. So, uh, a lot of control schemes available to you. Booyah! And 1 minute 25 seconds into Act 2, and we cleared this act as well! The levels do not overstay their welcome, which is also another thing I appreciate, but, uh... Anyway, I bet you're wondering what's up with the story. Well, now we get a cutscene. Welcome to Eggman's incredible interstellar amusement park, where you can enjoy five planets to the price of one. He loves to hear his own lips flap, but I gotta hand it to the Eggster. This place is epic. Everyone and their brother is gonna want to come here. No doubt, but now I'm not sure why we're here. This place looks totally harmless. Because Eggman plus secretly built amusement park equals evil plot for us to foil. Lucky for us, he's not very good at keeping things hidden. True. It would be pretty hard to miss a giant floating space amusement park surrounded by planets. Still, an evil plot? I don't know. Whoa. Wow! Plot or not, you can't be mad at this view. This place has taken beauty to the next level. I'm just surprised that it was so easy to sneak in here. Uh, I wouldn't say it was that easy. Happy people, buckle up as Eggman's ultra-accelerating space elevator whisks you to an interplanetary wonderland of fun! I can't believe somebody was dumb enough to leave the keys in this thing. It's like Eggman's begging us to sneak in and trash the place. Oh man, this thing's got crazy fast acceleration. <laughs> you call this fast? This amusement park has been constructed entirely out of a sense of remorse for my past transgressions and is in no way associated with any sort of evil plot or premeditated misdeeds. Well, that's a relief. Uh, just thinking about it makes my head feel like it wants to... Your voice chip is stuck on Cowboy again. Stop talking and let those aliens. You got it, partner. Come on over here, you little varmints. Come back here. I'm get you. Hey, come here. I'm gonna show you. I got you. I got you now. I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm sure of what I'm gonna do. got an alien gimmick, that's what's going on, Sonic. <laughs> Very unorthodox, uh, especially back in 2010, after all the Sonic games we had played up to this point, that when you start a new game, you don't have a cutscene or anything, you just get thrown into the gameplay, and it's not until you clear Act 2 that you finally input your name for your save file and uh, get the plot proper, so that's kind of interesting. They just threw you in there and were like, hey, play some levels before we explain what's going on here. 
Uh, you can make the icon one of the five pre like the pre-set characters, like Sonic, Tails, Eggman, Orbot, Cubot, and Yakker the Wisp. But uh, this is the world map. We have six zones, seven if you count the extra game land. And uh, this is all Eggman's amusement park, and he is the funniest and best part about this whole entire game. Oh my god, it's great. Just listen to him talk. Everyone knows my favorite character in this series is Dr. Eggman, and when you have an entire game centered around his interplanetary theme park, where he is constantly dropping a whole bunch of PA announcements about, like, all this information you need to know about the park, and he's being... This is the funniest Dr. Eggman has ever been written in this whole entire series. I've always thought he was the best part of the, every single Sonic game anyway, but Sonic Colors ramps that up to, like, ten. And, oh my god, Mike Pollock does such a fantastic job uh, reprising his role as Dr. Eggman. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna be going back to Act 1 and 2. I wanna get all the red rings, and I wanna get the S ranks. Now that we've unlocked the ability to use the Laser Wisps, I'm gonna go back to the previous levels and show you what aliens bring to the levels. We here at Eggman's incredible interstellar amusement park consider ourselves the universe's first fully green amusement park. Although the green is from all the nausea and vomiting, but still, green is green. I guess that would be one little nitpick I would have about Sonic Colors is that I wish that all the aliens were available right from the start. You pretty much have to get to a certain point in the game before every single alien is unlocked right off the get-go. So if you're trying to get all the red rings, and you're trying to get the special bonus you get for collecting all the red rings, you'll have to play through some levels more than once, but uh, it's not really that big of a deal. I'm sure if the game's good, you'd want to replay the levels more than once. But hey. <laughs> so now I'm going to be going through Act 1 and Act 2 again, this time collecting all the red rings, because you get something for collecting every single red ring in the game. Uh, and the more you collect, you actually unlock a whole bunch of bonus levels for the Game Land extra feature, which I'll be showing off much later in this playthrough. But, uh, obviously the big gimmick with Sonic Colors is the aliens, the Wisps. Right now I'm using the Drill Wisp. When you push the Z button on the GameCube controller, you will activate whatever Wisp you have collected. So, right off the bat, I started off with Laser Wisp, where... You push Z, and then you aim where you want the Laser Wisp to go, and then Sonic will pretty much propel forward in that direction. And if you aim at a wall, like the Laser Wisp will actually bounce off the walls, and it'll go in certain directions. And you can actually see the line before you actually shoot it, so you'll know where the Laser Wisp is going to go. So that's kind of awesome. And uh, the Drill Wisp is this yellow drill-like alien that burrows into the ground. There's lots of ground-type uh, set pieces in Sonic Colors, like this here, where I'm at a dead end, but I activate the Drill Wisp, and now I'm burrowing through all the dirt. And he's constantly moving, by the way. I can't stop him in mid-dirt. <laughs> like, uh, when you're barreling, barreling through all this stuff, you have to keep moving, and you have to keep moving. And keep an eye on the bar that is draining on the bottom left. That is actually the Wisp's energy. And when the Wisp's energy runs out, and you're still underground, Sonic will just automatically die, because Sonic will be buried in all that dirt, and he won't be able to survive that. He'll have no air, and that'll be it for him. Uh, so, you gotta pay attention to that bar, make sure that when it's about to run out, you get the hell out of there before you get buried, you know? Um, and I bet you're wondering why I'm just barreling around doing nothing, and just going in circles for no reason. Well, every time you use a wisp, right, you get uh, a whole bunch of points for every second that he's on. Like, you wait a second, and you'll see in the top right, you got a color bonus. You wait another second, oh, you got another color bonus. You wait another second, and it's like, hey, you got another color bonus. And you just want to keep using the Wisps as much as you can, because that will actually add to your score. And since I'm going for all S ranks in this run, uh, sometimes I'm going to be using the Wisps a lot more than I really need to. I know. I could just get out and go to the rail right now, but I'm going to wait till the energy drains, because color bonus, color bonus, color bonus, color bonus. That's a big score that I'm getting for each single bonus, and you need a huge score in order to get the S ranks. So, it is very much, um, expected that you will be using the aliens, you will be using the Wisps, in order to achieve those high rankings. But, uh, either way, 
Uh, this playthrough, again, will be all red rings, all S ranks. You'll be seeing where all the red rings go. There's only one level you need to play more than once in order to get every single red ring in that stage. So I hope this is all informative for you. And, uh... <laughs> God damn, this game is fun. This game is super, super fun, uh, really fantastic, and uh, it's, you can see why lots of people consider this the best Sonic game in the series. It has some problems that I'll be acknowledging, and there are some quirks that I don't love, but you know, we'll be getting to all that as we go on to part number two and three and four and all that jazz, but uh, you also get three extra lives for getting an S rank, and if you destroy the numbers here, you can burst one of them to actually expose another extra man, so, uh, that's something. Anyway, guys, I'm excited for this Let's Play. It's gonna be fun. I'll see you in part two.